Before you begin, ensure that your Exocom kit is complete. It should include the Exocom control unit, battery, speaker microphones, a USB-C cable, and Velcro tabs. If you are missing any of these items, please contact Scorpion XO for assistance. To ensure that you do not scratch your helmet or shield, we recommend placing the helmet on your lap or on a soft towel to complete the installation. Once you are set up, remove the cheek pads and crown liner. And now, you are ready for the install. To install the control unit, you will need to remove the door from the control unit housing on the bottom left of the helmet. Press the upper release tab and gently pry the door away from the helmet. Do not discard this door. Next, insert and feed the female USB cable through the opening at the bottom of the control unit housing. Do the same with the smaller male USB-C cable and then pull the excess from both cables all the way through until the bottom of the controller is aligned with the bottom of the housing. Now, align and insert the two small tabs at the bottom of the control unit into the corresponding slots along the bottom of the housing. Once inserted, Simply push the top of the control unit into place and you should hear a small click. Be sure to double check that both bottom tabs remained in place. If not, repeat the process. If you purchased your helmet in the Exocom pre-installed configuration, please skip this section as the speaker microphones have already been installed. For those who bought their helmet and Exocom separately, now is when you install your speaker microphones. You might also have noticed that there is no boom mic. That's because the microphones have been fully integrated into the Exocom speakers. First, separate the Velcro ring from each speaker. Then, one at a time, remove the protective backing for the two-way tape and install the Velcro rings into the speaker cavity. Note that the speaker to be installed closest to the control unit has a shorter speaker wire. With this done, simply install the speakers ensuring that the integrated microphones are positioned towards the bottom of the helmet. Next is the battery installation. First, Remove the battery door. Once removed, you will notice that the door also acts as a battery housing. Insert the battery into the housing with the USB-C port facing the control unit. Connect the male USB-C cable and then reinsert the battery and housing. It should click into place. With that done, gently tuck the excess wire into the small gap between the shell and EPS. With the control unit, speakers, and battery installed, it's time to tidy up the wiring. First, we recommend securing the excess wire from the right side speaker to the EPS with the provided Velcro tabs.
Next, we need to gently fold and tuck the excess speaker wires and USB-C connector into the small pocket built into the left cheek pad. That's the cheek pad on the control unit side. Be careful not to pinch or fold the wires. With the excess wires tucked away, now is the time to install the cheek pads. Start with the left. That's the one you just tucked your excess wires into. And ensure that you align the plastic cheek pad tabs so that the notch is aligned with the control unit wires. This avoids damaging the wires and is also a good way to ensure your cheek pad is properly aligned with the snaps. Once everything is lined up, firmly push the plastic tabs into the small gap between the shell and EPS. Now, with the bottom of the cheek pad properly tucked into place, be sure to pull the chin strap through the cheek pad opening before you connect the three snaps located at the front, top, and rear. Next, continue inserting the plastic tabs along the neck roll and then continue on to the right side to complete the cheek pad installation. With the cheek pads installed, all that's left is a crown pad installation. Start by connecting the two rear snaps. Then, Align and insert the front tabs along the top of the brow. You're done! Now you get to ride.